Ceviche is made by marinating raw fish in lime juice, where the acidity slowly makes the fish firm and flaky as if it were cooked. And recipes vary on how much time to spend in the lime, ranging from 5 minutes to 4 hours. Doneness of meat is a personal preference thing if you prefer rare or medium or well done, but there are some inconsistent reports of when that doneness is reached. Cooks Illustrated says 2 hours gives you a medium rare texture, Serious Eats says 2 hours is overdone with a dry and chalky texture. And these are both trustworthy sources, so there's something fishy going on here. The size of your fish pieces probably makes a big difference. A lot of recipes don't call for a specific size, most just say to cut into small pieces or cubes. I thought this might explain the difference between Serious Eats and Cook's Illustrated. Kenji tested slices at a quarter inch thick, but Cook's Illustrated doesn't say what thickness they used. Maybe it depends on the type of fish. Lean, white-fleshed fish is most common for ceviche, but recipes that recommend a variety of fish never make any note to change the marinating time, so this probably isn't a factor. But maybe it is. There's at least one way to find out. We do experiments, like Kenji did. I looked more at his article, which is proudly titled Ceviche and the Science of Marinades, so I hoped he'd have some sciencey insight. There's one sentence that says, Citric acid from the juice slowly causes the flesh's proteins to denature, but other than that, there's nothing that actually explains how the marination works. So not terribly scientific, but to be fair, first-hand experiments are a good way to produce some anecdotal findings. So first, I'm testing four types of fish. Ahi tuna, corvina, a classic South American ceviche fish, Alaskan rockfish, and Japanese yellowtail. And let me tell you, as someone who lives in Utah, in the middle of a desert over a thousand miles away from any ocean, finding this variety of sushi-grade fish was a challenge. I definitely have some advice on that I'll share in my next video. I cut each fish into quarter-inch slices and also thicker half-inch slices, then let them marinate in the juice at intervals of 5 minutes, 20 minutes, 1 hour, 2 hours, and 4 hours. Add a pinch of salt here. Quarter inch thick ahi marinated for just five minutes is feeling pretty firm, actually. So on these ones that are marinated longer, I can tell it reminds me of like a barbecue. How when you let the meat go for a long, low and slow cook, the connective tissue just kind of breaks down. This one has about a medium done texture, this Corvina at 20 minutes. If I just do a little pull test, I have to put a decent amount of pressure on this five minute one before it tears. But this four hour one is so tender with the lightest bit of pulling, it tears completely apart. The very well done four hour Corvina does have a very different texture from the four hour marinated ahi. I liked the flavor of the Corvina, but I'm liking the texture of the rock fish a bit more in comparison. I am definitely leaning toward this half of the matrix. The shorter marinades really preserve more of the texture and flavor of the fish. This yellowtail definitely has a different kind of flavor. Like it doesn't seem to get all flaky and tear apart as much. And I think that's just because of the nature of the kind of fish it is. The difference between 20 minutes and four hours is a lot more subtle. So this is definitely validating that different fish, it's not necessarily that it marinates at different rates, but depending on the kind of fish, it just does slightly different things to the texture. Two hours and four hours on this white fish is definitely more into the medium well and well done textures, but this five minutes to one hour on white flesh fish is the sweet spot for ceviche. I would say. It only crossed my mind briefly while doing this taste test, but it's critical to get fresh fish for the best flavor, and freshness probably is a factor for marination too, because fresh fish is firm, but over time it deteriorates, gets kind of mushy, and the muscles start separating and splitting apart, creating space for the lime juice to penetrate deeper, so the marination would work faster. I later found a different article from Cook's Illustrated for a recipe calling for eighth of an inch slices, and says 30 minutes is a good texture, 90 minutes leaves it dry and overdone. That recommendation makes more sense. They also added some oil and blended fish into the lime juice, so the marinade liquid they used was less acidic. 
And on the note of acid, some recipes also call for lemon juice or sometimes sour oranges. Maybe that makes a difference if your fruit is higher or lower acidity. I used a pH meter to measure lime juice and lemon juice. They were both around 2.1. But as with fish, not all citrus is created equal. When you go to a grocery store in the United States, we just have generic lemons and limes. I couldn't find any sour oranges, but sometimes you find key limes. Which if my research is correct, these would be a bit more authentic for ceviche. Peru specifically is where ceviche as we know it originated. Limon sutil is the most common lime used there. Some say limon sutil is a type of key lime, or that it's a variety of Mexican lime. Some say these are all the same thing. Some say they're all different. Stella at Serious Eats claims that key limes grown in the namesake Florida Keys taste way better than key limes grown in Mexico. As with most things botanical, it's more complicated than it seems. But I did buy some of the key limes to see if they were any more or less acidic. 2.3, not a big difference. Limes are generally reported to be between 2 to 3 pH, so the specific lime you're using probably isn't a big deal. But it wasn't always about limes. Going back centuries in Peru, ceviche was originally marinated in chicha, which is kind of like a beer made from corn, or sometimes the juice of banana passion fruit, which I actually have seen and eaten before. I tried it a few years ago when I was at a vacation in Ecuador. It was really cool, I'd never seen anything like it before. I recall it being a little sour, but not as much as lime. I think there is something to the idea that longer marination time was more necessary in the past. Citrus didn't enter Peruvian cuisine until after the Spaniards came over in the 1500s, so limes are relatively new to Peru. I thought that Lima, the capital city, might be named after limes, but that's not the case. The city had its name before the Spaniards. But it is a good way to remember that authentic ceviche uses lime. Though countries throughout Latin America have their own versions, there are hundreds of variations on ceviche. That leads to my final round of testing where I want to see if common ingredients other than lime juice have an impact on the marination. Red onion is popular in recipes, as is garlic. Chili pepper, typically the Peruvian aji amarillo would be used, I just have jalapeno. I'm not using authentic limes either, so I'm not too worried about having inauthentic peppers. I'm pretty sure these wouldn't affect acidity, but double check, lime juice by itself, 2.7, mixed with the veggies, also 2.7. Cool. I also want to see if salt makes a difference. A lot of recipes do call for salting the sliced fish and letting it sit before putting it into the marinade. I am making the assumption here that acidity is the important factor, but maybe the funky ions of salt does something else in addition. I did also measure acidity of plain lime juice compared to juice with salt added, and they were the same. So salt at least doesn't change the pH of the juice. I let this salted fish sit for 10 minutes, I'm using the Alaskan rockfish, then put this into the lime juice. Then in this jar, just the fish with no salt. Final jar, juice with all the veggies mixed in. I let these marinate and I tasted them at 5 minutes, 20 minutes, and after an hour. The marination effect was the same between all of them, but the pre-salted fish did have an interesting difference. When I bite into the salted fish feels a little bit more tender. Whereas when I bite into the non-salted, just feels a little bit drier and tougher. It's a subtle difference, but it is there. And it does make sense when you think about it, because basically what we did here with this salted fish is we brined it. It's what they call dry brining, when you just salt the fish and let it sit. The combination of that brined outside in addition to the denaturing protein effect of the lime juice, kind of balances itself out. And it was about this time that I realized the limitations of my testing. The variables involved in ceviche do have an impact, namely thickness and the fish you're using, but especially when you factor in personal preference, I wasn't coming away with practical advice based on my testing. It's one thing if you're trying to perfect a complex recipe like croissants, but I don't think ceviche benefits from this level of analysis. When you approach ceviche like a normal human being, it's really easy. Here's what you do. Cut your fish into evenly sized pieces, whatever size you like, salt the fish, and let it sit while you prepare the other ingredients, then soak it in lime juice, plus whatever add-ins you want, and check a piece of the fish every couple minutes. See how you like the texture. Pull it out when you think it's done. Your taste is the best way to know how long the fish needs to be marinated. You'll probably enjoy the dish more when you're not worrying about the recipe. 
Ceviche reminds us that recipes usually are just guidelines, not absolute rules. As long as you start with good fresh fish and trust your senses, you're just about guaranteed to enjoy ceviche.